first of all, I am feeling very, very good. A lot better than I was a couple weeks ago, that's for sure. Um, what I wanted to talk about today, the main thing that I wanted to talk about was my protocol. Since I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys asking, you know, what are you eating? What are you doing about this? What are you doing about that? What supplements are you taking? It is currently May 5th, about 7.30 at night, um, and I'm going to be trying something new. Basically what I'm going to be doing is vlogging every day, kind of recording what I'm doing, what I'm eating, what my thoughts are throughout the week, and then I should hopefully upload that video either Sunday or Monday, depending on how fast I edit it. Um, and then that'll just kind of play into the general video topic and what I want to talk about for that week. So. Uh, not too sure what I'm going to be talking about this week. I have a few ideas, but uh, I'm just going to be starting along this week, taking you along with, and we're going to see how it goes. Now, I am pretty bad at vlogging. I don't really know why. Um, it's just kind of hard for me to pick up the camera. I don't know. I don't have a good flow. Um, it's just a, a little bit awkward uh, for me to vlog, especially in front of my, uh, my family and out in public and stuff like that. Uh, which you might think is weird because I have a very good camera presence when I am alone, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I really want to make this happen for you guys. I really want to vlog, not just for you to show you what I'm doing, but also for me. So, you know, so I can look back on what I was doing. Um, and just kind of as a fun little, you know, piece of memorabilia. And because I really want to try putting weekly videos together and get on a schedule. So, um, I think that's the plan. I'm going to take you guys along with through the week. And yeah, um, we will see what happens. First of all, I am feeling very, very good. A lot better than I was a couple weeks ago, that's for sure. Um, and uh, so pretty much I can sleep through the night now and I don't have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night anymore. Um, at least not um, poo. My bleeding has tremendously reduced. I would say probably by 90% uh, would be my guess. Um, and my overall just urgency and diarrhea has decreased by probably the same degree. Um, so I'm going to the bathroom probably three to four times a day now. Um, the cramping in my right side has been reduced. It's not completely gone yet. I still get it um, occasionally after meals and just kind of randomly throughout the day, uh, which I'll be getting to in a moment how we're actually treating that. Um, and a few other things have kind of come and gone, like my breakouts along my chin and um, neck area kind of come and go just depends on how I'm feeling that day in my gut um, Which is to be expected until we treat my whole sort of detoxification pathway um, Issue and once we resolve my gallbladder issue as well um, But that's pretty much where I am now my energy levels are better still can't Sprint like to the best of my ability before I definitely lost some strength um, But I am still gaining weight actually I'm almost about to hit 180 pounds um, so in the last month I've gained about six pounds, which is pretty awesome. And yeah, things are going pretty smooth on the symptom front. So what I wanted to talk about today, the main thing that I wanted to talk about was my protocol. Since I've gotten a lot of questions from you guys asking, you know, what are you eating? What are you doing about this? What are you doing about that? What supplements are you taking? And first of all, I just want to say I am in no way, shape, or form a doctor or any kind of healthcare professional. I actually got this protocol from a healthcare professional that I am seeing and working with um, on a very personal level. Um, I will hopefully be able to talk more about that in the future, but as of right now, this is the protocol that I'm on. So, as for diet, I am following what is called a low FODMAP diet. to a place that I frequent almost every day, uh, and that is Whole Foods. Uh, one of the things that I prioritize is making sure that the foods that I eat um, are very clean, non-GMO, you know, obviously organic, which means that I'm not gonna be getting any extra glyphosate in my system, which I definitely do not need right now. And I'm on my way with this fool. 
who just likes to go for car rides and uh, it's just a fun little thing for us to do. So going to go get some low FODMAP snacks and also stock up for the week on my protein and produce. Hey buddy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I will show you what we get and it uh, should be fun. <laughs> okay. is that gas was like a buck or like 95 cents like a couple weeks ago and now it's back up to like a buck 50 and I feel cheated <laughs> buck 50 should not be expensive but it feels like it <laughs> off to Neverland I am following what is called a low FODMAP diet and essentially what low FODMAP means is it reduces the amount of fermentable carbohydrates in your diet so that it doesn't overexcite any bad bacteria or overgrowth of bacteria in your gut. So if you have something like SIBO or a candida overgrowth, a low FODMAP diet may be a very, very good idea. And essentially what this eliminates are pretty much all whole grains. So all breads are out the window. Anything that contains gluten is out the window, but obviously that makes sense because I was already eliminating gluten to begin with. Um, a lot of fruits, things like apples, mangoes, these kinds of things are very highly fermentable. Some vegetables as well, um, you have to limit your starchy vegetables, not, not by a whole lot, like I still have you know, quite a bit of potatoes and rice and things like that, um, but some vegetables, and also in my specific case, I've taken out all nuts and leafy greens and pretty much anything that contains any amount of insoluble fiber. So we've eliminated that and we've eliminated all foods that are high in FODMAPs. And I've seen some pretty great results. It was a little up and down for the first couple of weeks, uh, but my bloating has gone down, cramping has gone down tremendously, um, and my overall symptoms are reduced by what I would say to be about 80 to 90%. So as far as my diet goes, that's what we're doing. All right, so I just got done shopping. Got a lot of food, gonna go over it with you. And um, yeah, it's looking, looking good. <sighs> okay. So. The cool thing now is that um, I'm actually able to eat more foods now, and a lot of that uh, is a lot of fruit. I eat a lot of fruit, um, especially berries and um, just, you know, stuff like that. So this is one of my favorite fruit cups to get. It's a really great snack. It is, um, what is this? Having a mind blank. Oh boy. Uh, zucchini. Zucchini. Kiwi. <laughs> It's kiwi, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry, and raspberry. Uh, it's excellent, super good. And then something that's also really cool uh, that's an IBD legal treat is something called Zevia. I always used to like soda. I don't really like it so much anymore um, now that I started drinking these. These use stevia as their sweetener. Uh, it's just carbonated water, stevia leaf extract, um, natural flavors, caffeine, citric acid. Yeah, that's really good. And it does. It tastes a lot like carbonated water with just a t with a hint of soda flavoring. So it's not like, you know, that overwhelmingly sweet flavor that you get when you drink a Coke. And it doesn't leave you feeling bloated and gross afterwards. So it's a win-win for sure. Now for supplements. So for the ones that I'm actually able to supply to you guys, I will link them all down below in the description. But this is basically what I'm taking on a daily basis. So first of all, I am taking a spore-based probiotic supplement called Just Thrive. Again, it'll be down in the description. It's a little expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth it because it is spore-based. And what spore-based means is these probiotics are actually in their bacillus spore form, meaning that they're very hardy and are highly resistant to the extremely acidic environment that's found in your stomach, meaning that their survivability rate is a lot higher, meaning that they have a much greater chance of making it down to your colon and actually beginning to colonize and proliferate. The next supplement that I'm taking is a betaine HCL, which essentially is hydrochloric acid, and that includes pepsin. And I'm taking two of those with every meal, and the reason for that is because I was actually diagnosed with hypoclyhodria. 
hypoclyhed how do you pronounce that hypoclyhedria <laughs> So yeah, I was diagnosed with hypoclyhedria, which means low stomach acid. Hypo means low, and clohedria stands for hydrochloric acid, which is the main acidic component of your very acidic stomach. And so I'm taking two betaine HCL capsules, which equals about one gram of HCL with every meal that contains at least 10 to 15 grams of protein, which is pretty much every meal for me. Now the next three supplements are mixed into a drink. The first one is called GI Integrity, which is from a company called Nutridyne. It is prescription based, unfortunately, so you won't be able to get a hold of that unless it's through a healthcare practitioner, uh, but it's awesome. It's like a peach mango drink, tastes amazing, and it has essentially a bunch of things um, like aloe, uh, it's got marshmallow root, uh, it has uh, slippery elm, pretty much a lot of soothing things that are going to go down to your gut and help to soothe inflammation. Essentially like if you had a cut and you just put some coconut oil on it or something. The next powder that I mix in that drink is a type one collagen from Vital Proteins. Again, I'll leave a link down below in the description if you wanna check it out, I highly recommend it. Um, if you've never ordered from Vital Proteins before, um, with your first box you actually get some, uh, it's like, collagen water it's like a flavored water that's really good it's like a fruit drink that has like 10 grams of collagen in it uh, it's really good and you get them for free with your first box so uh, i'm not sponsored just letting you know um and yeah so that's the second thing i mix in is a type 1 collagen and the third thing that i always mix in is something called sun fiber or the more scientific name for it is hydrolyzed guar gum. And essentially what it is, is pure soluble fiber. So this would be for people that cannot tolerate any kind of plant fiber whatsoever. Taking in this hydrolyzed guar gum in its pure soluble form is essentially a good way to get the benefits of soluble fiber without having to consume any amount of insoluble fiber or plant fiber at all. So I mix about a scoop of that in and drink one of those every morning. The next thing I'm taking is something called biocidin, which is a whole conglomeration of herbs and things like oregano oil and wormwood and things like that. That's essentially a broad spectrum antimicrobial, antiparasitic, and antifungal that's being used to combat the minor SIBO that I have in my gut that I mentioned a couple weeks ago. And that's pretty much it. That's what I'm taking right now. So the next thing on the list is exercise. I make sure to exercise at least once a day. Um, I don't do extreme like intense exercise anymore, uh, at least not right now, because when I tend to do that, I tend to knock some stuff up inside and I kind of take a step back in my symptoms. So I don't exercise super intense anymore. So if I go to the track or go for a run or do like a calisthenics workout or something, I usually go a max of about 75 to 80%. So not all the way there. I'm just kind of saving that golden gear for when I'm healthy again. And the last thing on the list in terms of the protocol is chiropractic. So this is where things get a little bit crazy. I've been really researching all of the possible causes of IBD but I've learned a ton more ever since I started working with Dr. Troy and just figuring out a lot more about what makes the gut actually work. So I am completely intrigued by the brain gut connection and how the second brain affects this guy up here and how they talk to each other. And the crazy thing is, is that if you're stressed for a really long time, what that can actually do is cause partial or even complete paralysis of your gut. And that all happens through something called the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is one of your main cranial nerves that runs from your brain down your spinal cord and shoots off into a million other smaller nerves all throughout your abdomen. And it controls some of the main core functions that are involved with your parasympathetic nervous system, AKA the rest and digest nervous system. And so aside from aiding to control a lot of your autonomic functions such as heart rate and blood pressure and things like that, one of the main things that it controls is your digestive system. And the vagus nerve is how your brain actually communicates to your gut to see how things are going up here and influences how things go down here. So if you're really stressed out up here, what can actually happen is you can have an underactive vagus nerve and when your gut does not receive impulses from the vagus nerve, your digestion starts to go out of control. But if you become chronically stressed, like I said before, your vagus nerve can become partially or even completely paralyzed, meaning that it needs some actual manual stimulation in order to get working again. And this is where chiropractic comes in. So I'm at the track right now. Sorry about the wind. Uh, just getting in a quick workout before my first chiropractic appointment today. I'm excited and I'm nervous. 
because I had a sort of mini adjustment last time I was with Dr. Troy and uh, it was painful. <laughs> it's not very fun, especially when it's not just your spine that's getting adjusted, but your organs and you know, pretty much everything that goes on in there. But I'm excited because it's a step forward in my treatment and I'm excited to meet Dr. So by not only adjusting my back and my neck, but also things like my internal organs, uh, and especially around things like the ileocecal valve, which is where the small intestine connects to the large intestine, uh, and my bile duct, which is just under the rib cage here where the gallbladder and liver are, Massaging all of these areas and getting these things responsive again is one of the ways that you can manually force the vagus nerve to start responding and sending signals down to your gut like, hey, we need to start digesting again. And so what this vagus nerve stimulation does is it gets your vagus nerve to start working, which allows your gut to start working properly. And eventually, once the inflammation goes down, then those signals will be sent from the gut to the brain and that loop will be started all over again. And that is the main point. So I know that's a lot of information. A lot of things are going down. I'm still trying to understand it, but I'm completely fascinated by it and I'm absolutely loving every step of the way and I'm feeling a lot better. So hopefully that gives you guys some clarity as to what is going on with me and my protocol. And uh, yeah, I am really excited. And also something that's pretty cool is I just got this. <sighs> It's an electric skateboard. <laughs> woke up. It is uh, Thursday now. I'm gonna end up eating pretty much the same thing. Uh, that's one thing that um, is, you know, about this protocol is that I pretty much eat the same things every day. I eat pretty much the same breakfast. Designed for quieter blending. Oh wow, that's really cheap. I think we're gonna go with old middle of the road boy here. So I've run into an issue. I don't know how I'm gonna carry this blender back to the checkout line and my skateboard at the same time. And also, this box is huge. Not sure if it's gonna fit in my backpack. So it is 11:15 uh, on Thursday. I'm sorry, my hair looks absolutely weird, uh, but I didn't shower this morning and put on a hat to curb the bedhead. Um, I'm just uh, working on the vlog right now, uh, just doing some editing, and uh, I'll probably go to Whole Foods in a little while for a snack for my daily uh, daily quarantine outing. Um, since grocery stores are the only thing that are pretty much allowed at this point. Um, so yeah, I'll do that and then probably have some lunch and... Good morning guys, it is uh, Friday, May 8th, uh, and it's 
pretty early in the morning, it's about 5.45, and uh, just decided to get up early. Um, also had to go to the bathroom, but it was all good. We're still on a good course. Hey, what are you doing, mister? So yeah, today's gonna be a really chill day, pretty uneventful. I think I'm gonna end the vlog today, like I said. Uh, I'll probably just uh, work out, um, eat food, and uh, All right guys, so I wanted to end the vlog here with just a little bit of a reflection. So why do I think this protocol is working? Well, there's a few things that immediately jump out to me and I think there's a few things that we can gather from it. And the first one would be obviously the diet, the low FODMAP diet. I think the way that the diet is affecting the IBD is twofold. Number one, the low FODMAP. Obviously, when you reduce the number of FODMAPs that you're eating, you're going to be calming down not just the levels of bacteria, but the overall bacterial activity in your gut, which could be a bad thing if you have a healthy amount of bacteria, but it could also be a good thing if you've got something like SIBO or any kind of bacterial overgrowth in the wrong places or in the wrong amounts. And that was obviously what was going on with me. I mean, I was dealing with SIBO and a bunch of other stuff, so the FODMAP thing was able to calm the levels down and get everything back to baseline to where I you know, could actually start to see some progress. But this was not completely eliminating the fiber that I was eating. I was still eating things like carrots and fruit and potatoes and rice. But when it comes to fiber, I am not consuming any amounts of insoluble fiber. Or I guess I should say very small amounts of, you know, barring the occasional, you know, tomato skin or bell pepper skin or something like that. But as far as, you know, things like brown rice and bread, um, and nuts and seeds and leafy greens and all these kinds of things. I've completely cut those out of my diet, even though those are technically low FODMAP. I've cut those out of my diet because insoluble fiber essentially is like digestive shrapnel. It's purely there for a mechanical reason only. And for someone with a severely compromised gut, it does not make sense to be consuming anything that could possibly irritate the intestines any further. So insoluble fiber is completely cut out. And so by cutting out insoluble fiber, I've allowed my gut to rest. And this is something that I would suggest to any of you that are in a flare right now, which would be to cut out as much insoluble fiber as possible, if not all insoluble fiber altogether. And this can be a little bit challenging at first because it really does limit the types of foods that you can actually eat. But it's extremely worth it in that you're gonna start feeling better, you're gonna have a reduction in your symptoms, and eventually you're gonna start feeling better because you're not going to be consuming things that are directly perpetuating the cause. Now, as far as supplements go, I would say the supplements that are probably helping me the most would be the probiotics, the betaine HCL for my low stomach acid, and the sun fiber. Those are the three that I would say are probably helping me the most. The probiotics obviously are helping to push my gut bacteria back into balance. The betaine HCL with pepsin is allowing my digestive process to work more smoothly as I have more stomach acid to actually digest my food. And the sun fiber is there as pure soluble fiber so that I get all, all the benefits of fiber and fermentation without actually having any of the negatives of consuming plant fiber along with it. Now as far as exercise, exercise does help to bring my stress levels down as well as to move lymph around the body, which is obviously great for shuttling inflammation out of the body. And it's just a great thing to do. It really helps to keep you motivated, helps you to you know, keep looking good and feeling good. Um, so I would say exercise is definitely a critical component and something that you should consider as well. And then for chiropractic. Now this is something that, again, I'm still, it's still very early days in this for me. I'm still learning the whole applied kinesiology thing. But I would say I've felt a lot better and noticed a lot of my gains come from chiropractic. Now, does this mean that you need a chiropractic adjustment to heal IBD? No. I think that chiropractic is extremely helpful for those with stagnant digestive systems and issues with the vagus nerve, but there are tons of people that have healed from IBD without a chiropractic adjustment, without any kind of mechanical intervention at all. It's just been completely through diet, lifestyle, exercise, and mindset. Uh, so don't let that discourage you if you can't afford a chiropractor. I don't think you need one, at least not yet. Um, but I can say for me, especially um, with my more functional issues and the things like the gas and bloating in my right side and all that kind of stuff and the vagus nerve stimulation, 
the chiropractic has been invaluable and I'm going to continue to do that for as long as necessary and I will continue to update you guys on that. Um, but again, still very early days. I'm still learning exactly what's going on. But as of right now, chiropractic is a huge win for me as well. So that's gonna be it for this vlog. Um, it was extremely long. Let me know what you guys think, by the way, of the cinematic edits. I really enjoy doing those, um, but I'm not sure if they really fit in with the vlog style. So I don't know, I may keep them, I may not. Um, let me know what you guys think of me like vlogging throughout the week and then just uploading it as one video. Uh, not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm going to keep thinking about it, keep you know experimenting with new ways to vlog and you know just different ways of doing things. So if you guys like this video, then be sure to leave me a like down below and also leave me a comment. Just let me know how you're doing or if you need to vent, comments are always down there. I always appreciate your feedback or whenever you have to update me on your own health journey, I always love that as well. So. Thanks guys so much for watching. I love you all. Be healthy, be safe. We'll get through this together. And I'll see you next time. Let's get carried away. We've never been so close. Can't you see? Forget the fear, come out hiding, breathe in the air, we are deciding now, let's get carried away, carried away.